This video is sponsored by Squarespace and Existential Crisis. This might be a little bit of a different video than usual, but let's talk. This video is going to be about two things. First of all, the updates from Kyra, which is a Micro Four Thirds camera that you use in conjunction with your phone. And it's pretty cool and it's got a lot of interesting and innovative features, one of which is a lot of AI stuff, which is what the rest of this video is about. It's about man-made horrors of our own creation. I'm not really sure how I feel about AI in photography. And I started out this video as just a normal review of this camera and it sort of spiraled. So this is Kyra and this is the second iteration of this style of camera by a company called Camera Intelligence. If you've never seen these before, it's quite an interesting way of working things. It connects to your phone. It's currently only iPhone on this new iteration. And when you take photo and video, it immediately sends to your phone. It has a micro four thirds sensor and it has the same one that's in the GH5S, so pretty good in low light and pretty decent all round. This new version has autofocus, it's single point autofocus so far with continuous on the way. It feels just overall like a much more finished and usable and interesting camera compared to the original Alice camera. One thing that I think they've implemented really well is there are filters now for your JPEGs out of camera. It shoots RAW and JPEG so you're not tied in. But what I love is when you choose one of the filters, you have this sort of thumb dial where you can dial in the setting to taste and to the scenario you're in to make it a little bit more usable. Because sometimes when you whack a filter on in camera, the white balance of the scene might not be right. It might be indoors and look weird. It might be a cloudy day and make it look too cool. So this really helps you as you go on the fly, edit your photos in a really intuitive way. But let's get to it. The main new feature of Kyra is the AI features. It uses a service called Nano Banana, which is an AI sort of photo editing and generating service. And it's built in to the camera. Make the camera yellow to, ma to match the taxi style. And this is just quite slow because my signal is here. It's bad. You need good phone signal. Damn, I love that camera. Oh my God, Lumix, make that. Make the lens cap and the taxi sign yellow to match the camera. That's literally my dream camera. <laughs> it's just, it's ridiculously good. When I first started playing with this, I went in, as I usually do as a tech nerd, you know, new technology, this is cool. You know, I really want to keep up with everything that's going on. And then I came out of it going, oh my God. It is terrifyingly, terrifyingly accurate. Put this camera in a photo booth sort of style photo, like a product shot with a completely white background. Well, I could sell that on eBay. Not that I ever would. The first time I used this, it was just uh, on my shelf in here. I've got like a little teddy bear and this is the AI and the original image. Can you tell which one is real? It's my blooming house and I couldn't tell which one was real. I messaged my husband and he was just like, this is insane. And I'm like, yeah, we're at the point now where we can fine tune an image with AI without wrecking the rest of it. So like everything else stays exactly the same. It's just the thing that you want to manipulate that changes. And I have to pose this question to you as I've posed this to myself many times over the past weeks. Is this photography anymore? How much AI in photography is too much? So to answer that question, for me personally, the amount of AI I'm happy to use in one of my own photographs in good conscience is like removing distractions. So like if there's a random pigeon in a street photography shot that I wanna get rid of, I can get rid of it. And that's something that you could do using clone tools anyway. I just think that AI makes it a little bit faster. Recently, I shot this wedding and on the way back to the venue, the couple got all cute in the car park and it was the most gorgeous shot with the most gorgeous lighting, but there were blooming cars everywhere in the background so I used AI to remove those and make the shot usable. That's about the extent that I feel comfortable using AI within my photography. And this is obviously a spectrum. I think some people will be like, if it's not straight out of camera, it's not photography. And then there will be people that use Photoshop loads and replace skies and, you know, fix portraiture and things like that. And then there are people somewhere, makes me feel a bit sick in my mouth, that may grow up believing that typing a sentence into Nano Banana and it's spitting out an image at you, is photography. 
and that's the the progression that kind of scares me a bit so really think on it now and let me know in the comments i think this is a discussion that the photography community as a whole needs to start having because things are changing very very quickly and i'd love to know your thoughts of it like am i just being too cautious or is this actually something that's alarming to everyone else as well and i mean alarming in the sense that like in the world politically this sort of technology with photo and video ai now means that we're going into an era where you can't believe anything that you see. You could watch a video and it could be completely fabricated. You could see a photo of something and not know if it's real or not. But for the context of this video, I don't want to go too into the depths of horrors that's happening in the world right now. In, in this context, I mean for photography. As a creative person like myself, you watching this, how do you feel about AI in your creative field? So going back to the camera, because AI stuff aside, there have been leaps and bounds of improvements with this new camera. And one thing that I love about this design is you can use your phone from a good distance away as a monitor. So you could stick this on a tripod or on a surface, walk into scene, take selfies, take shots, take video for social media, because there is also a microphone and a cold shoe on the top. So you could use this as a really high quality social content creation machine that immediately wirelessly sends the video and the photos straight to your phone and then off into the world. Now I'm quite sure that a lot of people out there are going to be like, well, couldn't you just use that with a phone? Why add in this extra device anyway? And I think it boils down to this age old discussion, which I've talked about on my channel before, where if you value glass and lenses and sensor size and the characteristics that those two things bring to the table, you will get better and also different looking footage compared to just your phone. Whether or not this interests you or bothers you is a completely different discussion, but I do think there is a place in the market for these kinds of devices because not everyone is happy with the way that phones look. Some people prefer looking like a traditional camera, but having the communication with the phone is quite an interesting spin on it. Can you put a duplicate camera next to this camera in the photo? I want the camera to be exactly the same as this one, but two of them. Oh my God. Put both of these cameras in a photo booth sort of style with a white background. Dude. So back to the AI that's built into Kyra. One of the promotional videos that I saw for it was a shot in New York where they turned the foliage from green to like autumn and it looked really blooming convincing. And then I just started down this sort of thought process of like, okay, so you go to New York and you get these fabricated photographs, but you've not lived that experience. You've not been to New York when the fall colors are out. Like I went to Japan two years on the bounce in May and missed cherry blossom season both blooming times. It was terrifically unlucky. So I could go back and AI in some cherry blossoms into my photographs. But what is the blooming point? If I don't have a memory and a story attached to these images, what's the value of them? They're not mine. I may as well Google what cherry blossom season looks like. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if I'm taking this way too personally. I mean, like if you think about that, like the barrier to entry is now zero. If you want to create an Instagram page about New York in the fall, you can just go to Nano Banana and create a load of images. Get ChatGPT to write all your captions. Why not create some downloadable travel guides while you're there? It's all just easily accessed slop and it's not got the human connection anymore. Where does it end? One thing this has prompted me to think about and verbalize is as creators, even smaller creators like myself, I think there will come a time in the very near future where we need to draw a line in the sand. And I need to make a pledge to you watching, fellow photography enthusiast, and say that in my photography on this channel, you will never see AI crap in it. You will just see my own crap. <laughs> if it's a good or bad photo, at least I blooming made it. I'm a flawed human being and that's what happened and that's what you're going to see. And I think going forward, we're going to have to have creators that find out where they stand on that line. Are you over the line? Are you team AI? Or are you like old school, I just remove pigeons from street photographs because they're distracting? <laughs> 
So from me to you on this channel, there shall be no AI slop in my photographs. I want you to see them and the stories that I tell about them and whether they're good or bad, they're real and they're authentic and they're mine. And I think that should be important and that should stand for something. And if you're a creator too, you, you should also consider making this pledge at some point because it's coming. It's coming. I mean, think about kids now, like kids born this year, the year before, they're going to grow up with, with Sora. They're going to grow up with AI TikTok and they're going to grow up not knowing or even caring that the people talking to them on social media are zeros and ones. They don't exist. Ah. <laughs> So here is a horrifying test for you. I threw in some of my latest photos from Greece into Nana Banana and I said this prompt, something along the lines of make some similar photos in the same style that would look very similar side by side in a gallery. So let's put AI to the test. Out of these images, which ones are the ones I took and which ones are just completely made up bollocks? And be completely honest with yourself. Now, I'm not saying the original images were like, you know, groundbreakingly good, they're, they're fine, the passable. But if you saw any of the AI ones on my Instagram, would you would you think twice about it? Or would you just like like it and go, yeah, that's an Emily Lowry photo, well done. I mean, look at the homepage of Nano Banana. Hand on heart, how many of these could you peg as AI? Some of them are very obvious, but some of them are not obvious in the slightest. And also we're getting that way with video now as well. And the final test, right? This is very interesting to me because this photo that I'm going to show you is one of my favourites from this trip. I was trying to take a photograph of a, a church door and a cat in front of it and I had my camera through like this closed iron fence and as I stuck my camera through the fence the door of the church opened and then this comedic moment happened where this guy came out and was like no you can't come in to like this tiny little cat. And it just reminded me of the serendipity and the happenstance of photography and how that moment nobody else saw but him and the cat and me. <laughs> and if I wasn't there to capture it, it's come and gone and that's life. You know, a million fleeting moments happen every day all around the world. And sometimes we're lucky enough to capture the fun ones and sometimes they're gone. And then at that point, could I have just made that story up? Could I have just put show a man in Greece telling a cat off at a church into this software and it give me something. But like, is the final outcome, is the photograph the thing that matters? Or is the fact that it happened and I have a story about it and it was a cute little moment, what matters? What does photography mean? It may very much mean nothing unless you're a photography nerd like me and hopefully you. But I think throwing out all of these beautiful, polished, completely fake images through these AI softwares just diminishes it all somehow. And at this point, I'd like to apologise to Kyra. I promise I am very impressed with your camera and this is not any reflection on you or the product. It was just the product that prompted me to think about all of these things. And to be very, very clear, I'm not getting at camera intelligence as a brand whatsoever. There had to be a camera company that did this first. And it just happened to be camera intelligence with Kyra that did this first. I'm under no illusions within the next months and years, all of these AI features are probably going to be in big brand cameras. It's just the way that it's going. I spoke to the CEO the other day on a nice video chat. We had a really good sort of back and forth about the whole thing. And his ethos on it was the technology is already out there and all they are doing is harnessing it and offering it to the customers. He also said that there's a lot of guardrails in place within the Kyra app to stop any you know, not good prompts from happening. It's all like very safeguarded, which I also think is very important because AI is growing at a pace beyond ethics and a pace beyond how humans can adapt to it. It's very important that the camera company responsible for harnessing this sort of technology takes that seriously. And they do. So if you are interested in Kyra as a camera, you can think about it in two halves. One, just as a really interesting camera nerd camera, because you can use manual focus lenses on it. You can use micro four thirds lenses on it. And you can also think about it as it has AI features. The AI features within the app are like buried in the gallery. So it's not like thrust upon you the minute you turn the camera on. It's a completely optional endeavor. Some people using the camera will look at those features and go, yes, this is so cool. I'm here for this. And some people like myself will just see it as a really interesting micro four thirds camera. 
And comparing Kyra to the previous version, Alice, there are a lot of little hardware tweaks which I really appreciate as well. The lens release button is a lot stronger and more robust. The MagSafe is a brilliant addition on the back. It's a little bit smaller and lighter. I love the new silver colour and I really like that the grip is a little bit more comfortable and they've got a thumb grip as well. It was quite awkward to hold the original one. I found myself like pushing the phone out of the way to make space for my thumb. So they've really listened to the feedback and the new design, there's a lot of subtle improvements, but there are definitely improvements to be had. Also, if you are interested in Kyra as a camera, the team behind it, Camera Intelligence, will be monitoring these comments. So if you have any questions for them, as well as our own existential AI impending doom, they will be able to answer any questions you have about the camera. So throw them in the comments as well and someone from their team will be able to answer you probably better than I will. So going back to the man-made horrors of our own creation, I'm sorry, it's on my mind and yeah. I think it's important for photographers to have this conversation as well as human beings. Do you know that saying where it's like good artists copy and great artists steal? I think it was meant along the lines of steal something that you are inspired by but then go out with your own perception of it and make it your own. I think AI took that whole thing very literally because AI is basically taking everyone's style everyone's photography style for decades and decades and decades. I was recently at the Leica factory in Frankfurt and they're just celebrating their hundredth year anniversary as a company. So a hundred years of humans evolving photography, creating genres and creating community and deciding what's good and what's bad. And then AI just comes up and goes gobble, 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 gobble and just spits out like mashups of all this stuff. It is stealing at the end of the day. AI is stealing. It's not something that can create something from nothing. It can only create in the context of what humans have already laboriously made over a hundred years. Even down to lens choices and lighting and everything you see in an AI image is stolen from someone's hard work. And I didn't realize how passionately I felt about this until I started trying to write this script. <laughs> It sucks, man. I mean, I wanted to be in a world where AI did the boring jobs, you know, cleaned the streets and worked in the factories and did my accounts. That would be lovely. Why the hell have humans created AI that are stealing human creativity and stopping people from making money in creative fields? That is so dystopian. It's not a good thing. Let's have a good old discussion about it in the comments. I hope you've seen enough of Kyra and camera intelligence to, if this product interests you, go and check it out. They did say that I could do anything I wanted creatively with this video as it is not sponsored in any way by them. And I think I may have gone off piste from their point of view a little bit. So if you are interested in that camera, make sure you check out some other videos online because I do think it's very interesting indeed. I'm just going to quickly talk about the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. It kind of goes hand in hand with the conversation we've been having, like having a creative space online to call your own that's authentically you, I think is going to be more valuable than ever in the future. I think having like a, a blog or a mailing list where there's no algorithm between you and the reader, it's just if you want to watch or listen to what I have to say, go to this website sign up to this email address and there's no third parties interfering with it. I think that's going to be very important in the future and Squarespace is the place that I've done that for years and years and years. They make everything super easy for you even if you don't have any design background. So Squarespace has been a really long-term supporter of this channel and it's been really wonderful. So if you are looking to start your own website go and create your masterpiece and then you can use my code MICRO4NERDS to get a discount off your first purchase order. Domain. Thank you to Squarespace as ever and I shall see you in the comments.